Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the empirical rule. And so the empirical, empirical rule is similar to Chebyshev's theorem, but it's a little more specialized. It says that if your data is um, bell-shaped or the curve is like, you know, you have a normal distribution, so the distribution is bell-shaped, then approximately 68% of all the data values fall within just one standard deviation of the mean. And that's because, because we have this bell shape, you can see that 34% will lie over here and 34% will lie over, lie over here within one standard deviation of the mean mu. <clears throat> and then um, within two, you get 95%. So almost all the data falls within just those two distributions, standard deviations of the, of the mean. And finally, the empirical rule says that about 99.7% of the data falls within three standard deviations. So you can see that um, basically all but that last 0.3%. Um, so I guess 0.3, I guess that's three. Yeah, 0.3%, right? So basically 99.7% of, of the data falls within those three standard deviations of the mean because you have a nice bell-shaped curve like this. <clears throat> and um, this has some kind of interesting applications. It's interesting. Okay. Um, for instance, like if you if we look at the national average for mathematics SAT scores in 2011, um, the mean that that national average was 514. Suppose that the distribution of scores was approximately bell-shaped and that the standard deviation was approximately 40. Within what boundaries would you expect 68% of the scores to fall? Well, based on the empirical rule. Um, since this, we're assuming that this data is, is bell-shaped, we know that 68% um, that should fall within one standard deviation of the mean. Well, the mean was 514. So to figure out this range, you just take 514 minus 40. So that would be, um, let's see here, 474. If you subtract another, four, another 40, you get 434. And so what, what we're doing here is just labeling um, up to three standard deviations away from the mean. So it's 474, 434, and 394. And then when you go up, you go 554, 594, and 634. And so now if we go back and look at the question, it says, within what boundaries would you expect 68% of the scores to fall? Well, that would be from 474 to 554. That's one standard deviation away from the mean. So that's the range where 68% of the scores fall. And it says, what percentage of scores would be above a 594? Well, again, a 594 is over here. And so that is um, two standard deviations away from um, the mean. And so we're going to calculate the area of this little slice here. Like, what's, what percentage of the scores are above this 594? And the, because this data is bell-shaped, it's easier just to figure out how much of the data is outside of two standard deviations and then take half of it because half of that values will be over here and half of those values will be over there. So again, 95% of the data should fall within two standard deviations according to the empirical rule. And so that means 5% should lie outside of that. So in the tail values over here and over there. So if 5% is out here, then all you have to do is divide that 5% by two and you get that 2.5% will be above 594, okay? So we're taking 100% minus 95%. That's the um, area of this region over here plus the area of this region over here. And then we just divided it by two because we want to throw away this value. That's the, these are the values that are below um, 434. So we're going to just keep this piece over here, which is 2.5%. Um, I think that's it. Do you have anything to add there, Karen? No, that's good. Okay, thanks. Let's see.